Hi, this is Matt Baker. Today I'm going to answer the question, who would be head of the House of Garcenda today if the House of Garcenda was recognized as being an official royal dynasty? But first of all, for those who have no idea what I'm talking about, I need to explain what I mean by the House of Garcenda. Well, the House of Garcenda is the name that I have given to the hidden matrilineal dynasty that no one ever talks about, but which has produced more European kings and queens than any other dynasty ever, going back around 650 years or so. I should also explain what I mean by the term matrilineal dynasty. A matrilineal dynasty is one that is based on tracing the female-only lines in a person's ancestry, as opposed to the male-only lines, which is more common in Western culture. Over the last few months, I've been working on a chart that traces the most important matrilineal dynasties in European history, and I'm happy to announce that the chart is now finished. In fact, you can purchase a copy right now over on my website, usefulcharts.com. In this video, I'll be using this new chart to give you a brief overview of the eight dynasties it covers, as well as to look at some of the current descendants of the largest dynasty, the House of Garcenda, in order to determine which royal descendant is the most senior member of that house. So, at the top of the chart, we have three dynasties that date to around the year 1200 CE. These include the House of Eleanor of Aquitaine, who served as both Queen of France and Queen of England, the House of Euphrosyne, Empress of the Byzantine Empire, and, of course, the House of Garcenda, the reigning Countess of Forcalquier. In previous videos, I covered all three of these dynasties in detail, so if you're interested in learning more about them, I'll leave the links to those videos in the description. But right now, let me point out the other five dynasties that I haven't yet covered in separate videos. The first of these I've called the House of Beatrice, and I have to thank a commenter named Diago for this one. Originally, I wasn't going to include this dynasty, but then Diogo did the research and pointed out just how extensive it is. Basically, it starts with the woman who married Garcenda's son, Ramon. They became the Count and Countess of Provence in southern France. But take note, although everyone I'm about to mention is a descendant of Garcenda, they are not actually members of the House of Garcenda. That's because, matrilineally, they descend from Beatrice, not from Garcenda. Okay, so Beatrice was the mother of four queens. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's a record. Margaret married St. Louis IX of France, and Beatrice married Louis's brother Charles, who became king of Sicily. Eleanor married Henry III of England. And Sancha married Henry's brother Richard, who was elected king of Germany. Queen Margaret of France's line would go on to produce eight more queens. But it is Queen Eleanor of England's line that is perhaps the most interesting. On one branch, we get Margaret, Queen Consort of Scotland, Margaret, Queen Consort of Norway, and then finally, Margaret, the Maid of Norway who, by some accounts, became Queen Regnant of Scots at age three, but then died at age seven, creating a succession crisis in Scotland. However, this dynasty also includes an even more well-known monarch of Scotland, Mary, Queen of Scots, who was a 13th generation descendant of this house along a strictly female-only line. Okay, next we're going to look at the House of Isabella, Queen Consort of Castile. Her daughter, also named Isabella, became Queen Regnant of Castile. 
And for those who don't already know, I should probably point out that there are actually two types of queens. Queen consorts are simply the wife of the king, and they don't actually reign as the monarch. They're just married to one. On the other hand, a queen regnant is the reigning monarch of a kingdom, and is thus equivalent in rank to a king. However, don't confuse queen regnants with queen regents. Queen regents are just queen consorts who rule temporarily on behalf of one of their underage children. So, regnant, regent. Two different words. Anyhow, this Queen Isabella is the Queen Isabella of Castile who married King Ferdinand of Aragon. The two of them are known as the Catholic monarchs, and they're the ones who sent Columbus to the Americas and initiated the infamous Spanish Inquisition. One of their daughters, known as Catherine of Aragon, was the first wife of Henry VIII of England and the mother of Queen Mary I of England. But Isabella's two most important daughters were perhaps Maria and Joanna. Joanna became Queen Regnant of Castile after her mother died, and was the mother of Holy Roman Emperor Charles V. Maria became Queen Consort of Portugal, and was the mother of this Isabella, who was the first cousin and wife of Emperor Charles V. As you can see, this dynasty, shown in green, includes many other queen consorts and empress consorts as well. But for now, let's move over to the other side of the chart and quickly look at the house of Barbara, shown in yellow. This house is named after Barbara of Chile, who became empress consort by marrying Holy Roman Emperor Sigismund. Their granddaughter Elizabeth became Queen of Poland, and she is the matrilineal ancestor of many important European monarchs, such as Sigismund the Old of Poland and Gustavus Adolphus the Great of Sweden. He was one of the main generals during the Thirty Years' War. There are also several British kings who belong to this dynasty, such as Charles I of England and Scotland. He's the one who had his head chopped off during Oliver Cromwell's civil war, and George I, who took over from the Stuarts, and from a different line, George III, the one who reigned during the American Revolution and is known as Mad King George. Finally, through yet another line, we get George V of Great Britain and Nicholas II of Russia. It is often pointed out that George V and Nicholas II looked a lot alike. This is because their mothers were sisters, both members of the House of Barbara. Anyway, in total, the House of Barbara remained relevant for around 550 years and is thus second only to the House of Garcenda in terms of longevity. In the middle of the chart, shown in orange, we have the House of Maria Theresa, Queen Regnant of Bohemia and Empress Consort of the Holy Roman Empire. Her descendants include several important queens, such as Marie Antoinette, Queen of France during the French Revolution, Maria Amalia, the final French queen, and Louise, the first queen of the Belgians. However, this particular house also produced an unusually large number of empresses, including another Maria Theresa, the final Holy Roman Empress, Maria Louise, the second wife of Napoleon Bonaparte, Maria Leopoldina, Empress of Brazil, and Charlotte, Empress of Mexico. Finally, I'll also point out that this matrilineal dynasty produced the first modern king of Italy, Victor Emmanuel II. Next, let me show you the house of another Maria this time the house of Maria Louise, 
This dynasty, shown in blue, includes a record three queen regnants in a row. That, of course, was in the Netherlands during the entirety of the 20th century. From a different branch, this dynasty also includes the German Kaiser Wilhelm I, as well as two recent Belgian kings, Baudouin and Albert II. However, the most notable thing about this house is that it includes several current monarchs. King Willem Alexander of the Netherlands, Queen Margrethe II of Denmark, and King Harold V of Norway. So, of the seven kingdoms that still exist in Europe, three are held by the House of Maria Louise, making it the most dominant house, followed by the House of Garcenda with two thrones, those of Sweden and Spain. Okay, so speaking of the House of Garcenda, let's now turn our attention to that dynasty shown in red. As you can see from the chart, it's by far the largest of the matrilineal dynasties. And as I mentioned in my first video on the House of Garcenda, it includes some of the biggest names in European history. Names such as Louis XIV of France, Catherine the Great of Russia, and Queen Victoria of the United Kingdom. However, currently, the most prominent members of the House of Garcenda are both men, Carl XVI Gustav and Philip VI. Also, until very recently, there was Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh. But, Since matrilineal dynasties can only continue through females, you might be wondering, is the House of Garcenda about to become extinct? Well, that depends on how you look at things. Once the reigns of Carl XVI Gustav of Sweden and Philippe VI of Spain come to an end, there will no longer be any members of the dynasty sitting on a throne in Europe. In Sweden, the next monarch will most likely be Crown Princess Victoria, who matrilineally belongs to the house of her mother, Queen Silvia, whose own mother actually came from Brazil. In Spain, if the monarchy there still exists when Philippe VI dies, which will probably be many decades from now, considering he's only 53, and also probably unlikely as the Spanish monarchy is the least popular monarchy in Europe. But anyway, if the monarchy there still exists, the next monarch would likely be his eldest daughter, Leonor, who matrilineally would belong to the house of her mother, Queen Letizia. In the UK, of course, the next monarch there is likely to be Prince Charles. Matrilineally, he belongs to the house of his mother, Queen Elizabeth. Strangely, Queen Elizabeth is one of the few European monarchs who isn't from a major matrilineal dynasty. Remember, just because a person is a descendant of someone in the Garcenda line, such as the fact that Queen Elizabeth is a descendant of Queen Victoria, It doesn't automatically mean that that person is a member of the dynasty. To be a member of the dynasty, your mother has to be a member of the dynasty, as well as her mother and her mother and so on. So if we were to start from Queen Victoria and go by female-only primogeniture, her most senior female descendant would actually be a person closely related to Prince Philip. Prince Philip had four older sisters, all of whom married German nobles. One of those sisters was named Theodora, and it is one of her granddaughters, Katerina of Yugoslavia, who is currently the most senior matrilineal descendant of Queen Victoria. She is considered a Yugoslavian princess, even though the Yugoslavian monarchy is now defunct because her father was the brother of the last king of that country. Katerina lives in the UK and is involved in several charities, including, interestingly, the Society of Genealogists. However, Katerina is not 
the most senior person of recent noble blood within the House of Garcenda. That's because Queen Victoria was not actually the most senior noblewoman in the Garcenda dynasty either. Queen Victoria actually had an older half-sister named Feodora. It is from Feodora's line that both the King of Sweden and the King of Spain descend. And both the King of Sweden and the King of Spain have sisters. Now, although Caroline of Augustenburg is shown to the left of Empress Augusta Victoria of Germany, it was actually Augusta who was the older sister. She had only one daughter, Victoria, who had only one daughter, Frederica. Frederica became queen consort of Greece and had two daughters, the eldest of whom was Sophia who became Queen Consort of Spain and is the mother of King Philippe. It is therefore Queen Sophia, now in retirement with her husband, who is currently the most senior noble member of the House of Garcenda. And next in line is Philippe VI's eldest sister, Elena, who is currently 57. She holds the title Duchess of Lugo, and has two children, a son named Philippe, and more importantly for this video, a daughter named Victoria. So, in my opinion, if there were to be such a thing as the head of the House of Garcenda, considering that Queen Sophia is retired, I believe that it is Elena, Duchess of Lugo, that should be head of the house and that her daughter, Victoria, should be her heir. Okay, so that was another look at the House of Garcenda and some of the other matrilineal dynasties in Europe. Once again, if you'd like to get a copy of the chart, you can head over to usefulcharts.com. Thanks for watching. <laughs>